I love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> really? I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's poppin' my bros? What's good? Another full card UFC predictions video to make. This one's gonna be maxed, blessed Holloway taking on Arnold Allen. What a great main event. As always, we take a look at my bets, then we jump into Money C. I had a pretty good card on UFC 287, made just under a unit profit. My winning bets were KG plus 100, Adesanya minus 125, and I had a parlay with Pfeiffer and Godinez at plus 110. Now, guys, for the Money C champions, if you see your name on the screen, you already know you represented the gang. To be honest, a lot of people got dusted by Amorim, uh, Raul Rosas Jr. and Pereira. So yeah, hopefully more people can visit the land, the promised land, Money C. If you want your comment to feature, obviously hashtag your comment. All right, guys, let's go. Let's break down the fights. Let's make some picks. All right, first matchup on this card, guys. We've got Jocelyn Edwards taking on Lucy Pudelova. Now, the thing with Jocelyn Edwards, there's a few weaknesses. When you go back and look at tape of Jocelyn, the weaknesses that show are the cardio. The cardio is not good. The other weaknesses would be poor defensive wrestling. You know, her, her defensive wrestling isn't good and her ground game is also not good. You know, looking at Jocelyn Edwards, she's a good kicker, she's a good puncher, but the cardio, that's really what lets her down. The defensive wrestling, it lets her down. The ground game, it lets her down. So those are going to be the main weaknesses for Jocelyn. Now, guys, on the flip side, Lucy Pudelova did return to the UFC not too long ago. And man, she put on a really nice performance against Wu Yanan or Yanan Wu. Essentially, what Lucy Pudelova done in that matchup was take her opponent to the mat and just smashed up, dusted up. Guys, go back and rewatch what Lucy Pudelova done to that girl. She smashed her head through the canvas with elbows. It was nasty. Really good work. So yeah, this is a good matchup. I believe the weaknesses of Jocelyn Edwards could show. You know, start well in this matchup, but midway through round two, Lucy Pudelova starts to show us that fatigue in Jocelyn Edwards. And that's what I'm going to side with. I think Jocelyn, if she gets taken to the mat, you know, might get stuck on the mat. And you see how well Lucy done on the mat against Wu Yunnan. So yeah, guys, my first prediction is going to be Lucy Pudelova to potentially find a stoppage on the mat against Jocelyn or to win over 15 minutes. That's going to be my first pick. I'll side with Lucy Pudelova. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Gaston Belenos taking on Aaron Phillips. Now, guys, Aaron Phillips hasn't fought in nearly three years. You know, the last time Aaron Phillips fought was like 2020, which is... You know, just a massive, massive red flag. On the flip side, you've got Gaston, who went 6-3 and three in Bellator, which is, you know, not a good record, really. But his striking, his Muay Thai, is pretty good. But yeah, guys, I'm not going to get into this one too much. I'm going to side with the Peruvian. I'm going to side with Gaston Belenos to use that Muay Thai, potentially get a stoppage against Aaron Phillips. Anyone that's picking Aaron Phillips with a three-year layoff, I, I don't get it. I wouldn't make that pick. See, I'm going to side with Gaston to win this UFC debut. All right, moving into a matchup between Bruno Brazil taking on Denise Gomez. Now, guys, I did bet on Bruno Brazil in a contender series matchup. And essentially what she done to Marnik Mann was like, bang, headshot dead. You know, it was Leon Edwards-esque. You know, it was really nice. It was really the same thing, you know, touch her with the jab, show her the right hand, but then the right kick lands, you know, and that's how she stopped the fight. It was a really nice stoppage. But yeah, Bruna Brazil, you know, the kicking is very good, the teeps, but if you can get past the kicks and clinch up, her takedown defense isn't the best. On the flip side, Denise Gomez did lose to Loma Lookboom Me in a UFC debut. And let's be honest, that UFC debut was very difficult. Like Loma Lookboom Me is like one of the best Muay Thai practitioners. Now guys, Bruna Brazil can kick. You know, she can kick, but she can't kick like Loma Lookboom Me. You know what I'm saying? So although it's still a very difficult matchup in terms of like kicks, although Denise Gomez is competing against a really good kick up, She's competed against an even better one in Loma Look Boom Me. See, I think this matchup is kind of difficult to predict because if Denise Gomez can close the distance, you know, get past the kicks, she might land some big shots. Or even Denise Gomez being able to get Bruno Brazil to the mat, you know, and, and just kind of win there. So yeah, I think this one's pretty difficult to predict. 
I'm going to side with Bruna Brazil though. She made some nice money for me against Manic Man. I'm not going to bet this prediction, but yeah, I'm going to side with Bruna Brazil. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Lando Venata taking on Daniel Zalhuba. This is going to be a good, good striking matchup. And guys, just take a look at Lando Venata's record. Let's take a look. Look at his record. It's win. No, sorry, it's loss. Win, loss, draw, loss, draw, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Guys, that's a legend. That's a legend right there. Never done two in a row anything. Now, unfortunate for Lando, he did get the pants choked off of him by Charles Jourdain. You know, the, the pants were, were falling down whilst defending a guillotine choke, which is very unfortunate. But yeah, Lando Venata has got a, a good, good match up here. Daniel Zalhuba is a, a good striker. Now, I know we didn't really see that against Trey Ogden. You know, you look at Daniel Zalhuba in that fight and it's like... What are you doing? You know, not really showing much in that matchup. But yeah, I think Daniel Zalhuba is going to bounce back. I think this matchup is going to be suited for Daniel Zalhuba to show that striking. And I think he does. See, I'm going to side with the golden boy, the Mexican, Daniel Zalhuba, to beat Lando Venata. And Lando Venata is going to lose two in a row for the first time. But guys, that record is legit. Seven years in the UFC, 12 UFC fights. Never lost two in a row, never won two in a row. That's legit. But yeah, give me Daniel Zahuba to win the matchup. Uh, moving into a matchup between Piero Rodriguez taking on Gillian Robertson. This is a good, good matchup. Now, guys, the reason why this is a good matchup, we know Gillian Robertson is a, a really, really high level jiu jitsu player, like a sick black belt. We know that's the case for Gillian. But guys, have you ever seen Gillian Robertson improve her plan B? Have you ever seen Gillian show us, look, even though I can't get this fight to the mat, let me show you some improved stand-up. I've not really seen it too much, like too much for it to be noticeable. Gillian Robertson is just a pure grappler. And the thing is, guys, like to be a champion, there's a, there's a process that you go through, right, of proving yourself, you know, proving I can strike, proving I can grapple, proving I've got cardio. You've got to prove so many things. Now for Piera Rodriguez to progress, she's got to prove that she can be a high level black belt, a high level grappler. But guys, people don't realize that the test is still remains the same for Jillian. You know, she's got to prove that if she can't get the fight to the mat, show us that you're, you're getting better. You know, show us you can strike, show us you can compete on the feet, which seems to fail most of the time for Gillian. So yeah, guys, you've got Piero Rodriguez, who I do believe has a big test this weekend, but make no mistake, there's two tests. Yeah, Gillian's getting tested again on the feet, and if Gillian can't get the fight to the mat, I think she probably fails that test, as we've seen her fail that test before. So yeah, this is a really good matchup. I like the striking of Piero Rodriguez. The hands are sharp. The hands are quick. And to be honest, guys, the wrestling of Piero Rodriguez, in my opinion, it's not that bad. You look at the wrestling of Gillian. I don't think her wrestling's too good. Like, don't get me wrong, when she can get the fight to the mat and she gets on the mat, her jiu-jitsu is very good. But the wrestling, the wrestling's not that great. So yeah, give me the underdog with this matchup. Give me Piero Rodriguez to find some success on the feet. And if Gillian struggles to get the wrestling going, I see the underdog Piero Rodriguez winning this matchup. So that's going to be my pick. Now moving into the next matchup, guys, I don't even know why this is a fight. We've got Ed Haman taking on Zach Cummins. If you're betting on this matchup, you are a high level degenerate. And that's not a good thing. You know, you don't want to be a high level degenerate. You can be a degenerate. But if you're betting this, I don't know what to say. Now, Zach Cummins hasn't fought in over two years, even closer to three years. And Ed Man hasn't fought in two years. Guys, I don't even know why this fight's on the card. Like, I don't even know what this is. You know, this is like a, a retirement home fight. If you want to see what it looks like when two people in a retirement home go to, go to war, if you want to see that, Ed Herman taking on Zach Cummins right here. You know, this could actually be funny, to be honest. Like, guys, imagine if you're if you're trying to make a prediction on two people in a retirement home going to war. Like, who are you going to pick? Hey, give me the one with the walking stick, you know what I'm saying? Nah, but on a real note, this is a, this is a, you know, this is a disgrace, to be honest. I'm going to side with Zach Cummins for no reason. There's no reason. 
this should not be a fight. And if, if I get this pick wrong, good. Almost good if I get it wrong. You know what I'm saying? There's no breakdown. I don't know what to say. This is a disgrace. All right, moving into a very, very good matchup. We've got Brandon Raw Dog Royville taking on Matthias Nicolau. This is a very good matchup. Now, the reason why this is a good matchup, when you look at the attributes that Brandon Royville has, you know, excellent, excellent cardio, really high output. His ground game isn't bad. You know, his jiu-jitsu is good, and if you take him to the mat, he's going to throw up some triangles, arm bars. He's going to scramble. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to like about Brandon Royville. But when you look at the weaknesses of Brandon, let's, let's take a look at the weaknesses. First of all, the takedown defense isn't good. His ground game's good, but you can take him to the mat. And another thing about Brandon Royville is his chin isn't the best. And if you can connect, you can drop him. And another weakness would be... He's reckless, you know, almost like a Steve Garcia, you know, just reckless. He's focusing so much on the attack, so much on the offense that he kind of forgets there's punches coming his way and he'll leave his head on the center line. Now, guys, being reckless against Mateus Nicolau is not a good idea because Nicolau has very, very sharp hands. Like, this guy's boxing is very good. He's not like an output monster the way Brandon Royville is, but he'll pick his shots. He'll pick his timings to, to fire the hands. And they're clean. They're powerful. And I kind of feel like the weaknesses of Brandon Royville are going to show. You know, the output's good. The cardio's good. But if you leave your head on the center line, you're going to get clipped. And I think Matthias Nicolau is the guy to clip. Brandon Revel, you know, he's going to set him down. And I think he'll get a TKO. So yeah, give me the Brazilian Matthias Nicolau to win this matchup. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Bill Algio taking on TJ Brown. This is a very good matchup. Now, guys, essentially what you've got with Bill Algio is like Corey Sandhagen from Wish. You know, this is like an off-brand Corey Sandhagen. You know, really long arms, long legs, skinny body type. And he kind of plays the same game, you know, wants to kick on the feet, wants to maintain the distance, you know, show some trickery. So if this matchup stays on the feet against TJ Brown, a wrestler, TJ's a wrestler. If this stays on the feet, Bill Algio should dominate that fight. You know, the kicks of Bill Algio would start to add up and he would just be in control. You know, the striking should be for Bill Aljo in this matchup. But the flip side of this matchup is going to be TJ Brown wants to wrestle the opponent. You know, you've seen his last performance, a really nice wrestling performance. You know, he was able to take his opponent to the mat over and over and eventually gets a stoppage on the mat. You know, this matchup's going to come down to who's going to impose their will. Is Bill Aljo going to stay on the feet? Is he going to be able to strike? Or is the wrestler, TJ Brown, going to be able to get Bill to the mat and impose the wrestling? It's going to be one or the other. For me personally, guys, I'm going to side with the underdog, TJ Brown, to get the wrestling going. If he can get Aljo to the mat and look to fatigue him you know i think he could cash at plus money so yeah i'm gonna side with tj to win this matchup if you waited to smoke with me amen if you've been smoking this whole time double amen if you're not a smoker but you enjoy the smoke breaks that's always been a triple amen let's go as always guys if you want all the best i'm personally going to be making on this ufc card the only way to do that is to join my patreon and make sure you join my discord group too now guys adesanya and Pereira, i'm not gonna lie that was satisfying that was really really satisfying but that's a bet that i'm never gonna forget for obvious reasons like Pereira had won three fights and Israel done that he done that he got out the bow and arrow oh my goodness but guys my question is this does Pereira have to fight Adesanya again or does Adesanya have to fight Pereira again because it's 1-1 in mixed martial arts, it's 1-1 and I know Dana White said that Pereira is going to be moving to 205 but Guys, it's 1-1. So maybe at some point we're going to get that third fight. And I'd like to see it. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section below. Do you think we're going to see a trilogy fight between Adesanya and Pereira? All right, moving into a matchup between Clay Guida taking on Rafa Garcia. This is this is like a mirror match. I say it's a mirror matchup because both guys kind of want to do the same thing. You know, both guys are looking to use their cardio. And both guys are just looking to break the opponent. Whether that's wrestling or pushing the opponent against the fence or striking, you know. They're looking to do the same thing. Now guys, Clay Guida has been around for a long time. And I don't really expect him to do well against Rafa Garcia. 
You know, what Rafa Garcia wants to do is the same thing that Clay wants to do. You know, they both want to do the same thing. So essentially, you've got the old veteran who wants to try to break Rafa Garcia. And then you've got Rafa Garcia, who's obviously newer to mixed martial arts. Rafa Garcia is looking to break Clay Guida. You know, both of these guys are dogs. Both of them are dogs. But yeah, for me, I'm not going to side against Rafa Garcia in this type of matchup. For me, I've got to side with Rafa, the Mexican, to beat the legend, the veteran. I'll take Rafa Garcia to win this matchup. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Pedro Munoz taking on Chris Gutierrez. This is a good matchup. Now, guys, what makes this matchup so good is Chris Gutierrez is like one of the best kickers. Like a really, really good calf kicker. And it's interesting because Pedro Munoz used to be a jiu-jitsu player. You know, used to be all about the grappling. But if you look at Pedro in his last few years, you know, he's really become a kicker. Really become more of a, a calf kicker. So really, you could say this is calf kicker versus calf kicker. You know, battle of the calf kicks. Of course, there's a chance that Pedro Munoz chooses to bring Chris Gutierrez to the mat. You know, maybe goes back to the jiu-jitsu. There's a chance. But there's a chance also that these rounds could be purely striking. You know, Chris Gutierrez looking to kick the opponent. And Pedro Munoz looking to return all of the kicks. You know, this could be a really good kicking matchup. For me personally, I do believe Chris Gutierrez is more natural of a kick-up. More natural of a striker. And that's purely the reason why I'm going to side with Chris Gutierrez to win this matchup it's a good matchup though you know good fight uh, moving into the next matchup we've got Eon Kutalaba taking on Tana Boza now guys Tana Boza is going to be moving down to 205 from heavyweight and guys the main thing with Tana Boza is his takedown defense isn't good and when he does get taken to the mat he doesn't really know how to get back to the feet you know you see that against Latifi you see that against Rodrigo Nascimento if you want to beat Tana Boza, just take him to the mat. Now his opponent, Eon Kutalaba, is a wrestler. This guy likes to wrestle the opponent and he's gonna try to get Tana to the mat. Now I say try to get Tana to the mat. It shouldn't be too much of a, a difficult thing to do. You know, he should be able to just get Tana to the mat with pure strength. But guys, here's the thing with Kutalaba. His cardio is really bad. Like, past round one. His cardio just falls off a cliff. So really there's two weaknesses. You know, there's Tanner's takedown defense is not good. And on the flip side, you've got Qutalaba who's got bad, bad cardio. In my opinion, guys, if you're going to bet on Qutalaba, you probably want to be confident that he can stop the fight round one. You know, don't have to see the bad cardio. And also, in my opinion, if you're going to bet Tanner Bows up, you probably want to be confident that we're going to see round two. So you can see the bad cardio of Qutalaba. It's really going to be one or the other. I'm going to side with the underdog. I always seem to lose with Tana Boza. But yeah, I'm going to side with Tana. Uh, moving into a matchup between Dustin Jacoby taking on Azamat Mirzakhanov. Now guys, Dustin Jacoby's made me some good money. And if you look at the style of Dustin Jacoby, you know, it's difficult to compete with this guy. This guy's good. Now in my opinion, guys, he did beat Khalil Roundtree. But Khalil did land some big shots at the end of round one. Now guys, the opponent, Azamat Mirzakhanov, he did get pretty tired against Stefan and Chakwi. And he also got tired against Devin Clark. He did win both of these fights, but you can see there's a bit of fatigue you know he kind of gets tired now guys this is going to be a striking matchup Dustin Jacoby likes to strike on the feet Azamat Mirzakhanov wants to stay on the feet so really you've got to find the the main difference you know is it going to be the speed and output of Dustin Jacoby or is it going to be the power of Azamat Mirzakhanov because when Azamat lands you know he's very powerful I've not picked against Dustin Jacoby yet I've picked him in every single UFC fight but for this one I'm going to pick against him. At times, I think he was kind of hitable against Khalil Roundtree. You know, Khalil's powerful and he was landing. I think Azamat Mazakarnov is really powerful, but he's more technical than Khalil Roundtree. So yeah, give me the underdog, Azamat Mazakarnov. I'm going to go against Jacoby for the first time. All right, guys, moving into the co-main event, we've got Edson Barboza taking on Billy Quarantillo. This is a good, good co-main event. Now, guys, we know Edson Barboza is one of the best Muay Thai strikers we've ever seen. His kicking ability is just insane. It's like insanely good. So yeah, we're going to give that to Edson Barboza. His ability to kick is second to none. 10 out of 10. But guys, at the same time, like Edson Barboza is 37 years old. 
You know what I'm saying? He's he's not getting younger. He's getting older. Like, guys, don't get me wrong. Billy Q's not perfect. His striking defense isn't great. He is hittable. When you look at his cardio, his toughness, his willingness to fight, that's all in the favor of Billy Q. You know, with this type of matchup, it may not come down to who's technically better, but more who's fresher, who's got more to offer. And I think that's probably going to be Billy Quarantillo. So yeah, give me Billy Q in the co-main event. All right, guys, moving into the main event, we've got Max Blessed Holloway taking on Arnold Allen, the homie, the boy, Arnie. Let's go. Now, I cannot wait to watch this matchup because the boxing of Max Holloway is just super good and the boxing of Arnie is just super good. Like, both of these guys are really, really good boxers. And I know some people listening to this breakdown are thinking like, now hold on a minute, Max Holloway is the really good boxer and Arnold Allen is, is a good boxer but he's not on the same level as Max Holloway. I know there's people listening to the breakdown thinking that and that's funny to me because I, I disagree. I disagree. I think if you put both of these guys with boxing gloves in a boxing ring, I think you'd be shocked. I really think you'd be shocked. Like don't get me wrong, Max Holloway can box. He's got good output, but the self-poor stance, the left hand of Arnold Allen is, is a sniper. It's a piston. Like, seriously, guys, the boxing of both of these guys is very, very good. Max Holloway's taking a lot of damage, like a lot of damage. And at this point, he doesn't really want to take too much more. And Arnold knows that Max is there to be hit. Guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Arnold Allen is the real deal. This guy's the real deal. His boxing is very good. His power's good. His IQ's good. His footwork's good. His grappling's good. His work ethic is good. You know, everything in the game of Arnold Allen makes him a serious, serious opponent for anyone. And that's essentially why Arnold has had 10 UFC fights and won all 10. This guy's good. And if you think it's going to be a walk in the park for Blessed Holloway, I don't know what to say. You've not been watching Arnold Allen and you don't truly understand the matchup that you've got. You don't truly understand the styles. You know, this is a boxing matchup. And in that boxing matchup, Max Holloway is not going to find the same success that he found against Calvin Cater. It's not going to be the case. And that's because Arnold is not like Calvin. You know, he's not going to use a high guard. He's not going to show toughness. Instead, Arnold is going to show footwork. He's going to show speed. He's going to show IQ. He's very different to Calvin Cater. And he's nothing like Yair Rodriguez. You know, he's not like a, a pure kicker. He can kick, but he can also box. Guys, I'm not saying it's going to be impossible for Max to win the fight. I'm not saying that. He's got a chance. He's got a good chance. But would I cap? Max Holloway around minus 200, minus 170, minus 180 against a really, really good boxer in Arnold Allen. Would I do it? No, I wouldn't. I think this matchup is going to be closer to a 50-50 matchup considering it's, it's a boxing matchup. And I think the right side in, in a close matchup would be the underdog. Arnold Allen to shock the world again. So my prediction is going to be the underdog, Arnold Allen, to win this matchup. All right, guys, let me know you're taking in the main event, your co-main event, all of your picks, your Money City picks. And as always, keep your eyes to the sky, never glue to your shoes. Das Mac Miller. Peace. Peace.